All right, we're going to get started. Uh, welcome, everyone. Tony, you want to take it over? Sure. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, welcome. Uh, here is what we're going to do. Um, we're going to quickly go through um, some introductions about who we are, what the program is. Um, we're going to answer the questions that some of you have submitted to us in advance, and then we're going to open it up for live Q&A um, a little bit later. Um, so first of all, who are we? Uh, what are we doing here? Uh, my name is Tony, and I manage the Google Podcast Creator Program at PRX. So um, day in and day out, I work on um, running this program, and I have my colleague, uh, Eric. Hi, so uh, my name is Eric and I work with uh, Tony on the training team at PRX uh, and uh, so I assist with uh, various programs, including the Google program. Yes, we also have our colleague Stephanie here. She's helping us out uh, run the webinar and she's also going to help us answer some questions later. Um, so a little bit about uh, PRX. Uh, so we are a nonprofit uh, media organization and uh, we do a lot of work to support the work of audio producers um, to help them reach their audience, uh, it, uh, both in podcasting and in radio. Uh, and um, you know, there's a nice blurb here about kind of like uh, um, how we, try, we do our best to uh, work in the world of journalism and also to amplify unheard voices. Um, uh, we also both, uh, Steph, Tony, and I are all part of the training team. And on the training team, we do a lot of workshops uh, and uh, work collaborate with a lot of uh, uh, big um, clients to uh, put together podcast programs. Uh, and Google is, uh, is one of those projects. Right. So this Google Podcast Creator Program is one of many undertakings um, for the larger training team at PRX. But real quickly, a little bit about it. Um, so it's a partnership between PRX and Google started a few years ago um, with the focus to support underrepresented voices in podcasting across the world. Um, so we have had the privilege of working with some amazing teams uh, from a variety of different countries. Uh, many of them have launched um, some successful podcasts. So uh, we've learned a lot from them and we're so proud of them. Um, what that training actually looks like is our team, so folks from PRX, um, as well as the program's team of international um, advisors from the podcasting industry uh, from around the world. So um, we do lots of workshops, uh, webinars, feedback sessions, creative reviews, um, and in addition to really focusing on sort of specific skills, um, we also really teach like ways of thinking creatively and effectively to work together. So we hope that in addition to really like, um, you know, being able to improve your focus on your podcast, you learn just great skills um, for how to um, do work. Um, what we're looking for in the program this year um, is podcasters who already have some experience. Um, we're going to talk about this in more detail as we answer questions, because I know a lot of you have questions about this. Um, sort of the jumping off point that we asked for is to have five episodes published since January 2019. So it's basically we want to run a training this year that is about helping people who have started producing a show really kind of get to the next level. In order to do that, we are going to be asking for people to pause their production for these 12-week training cohorts, really commit a significant amount of time to learning online and sort of relaunching um, their podcast. We're looking people for people from a really wide range of backgrounds. That said, um, you do need to be fluent in English to participate. At this time, we're only able to offer training in English. Um, so you do need some English fluency. Finally, we are looking for um, a great application. Um, and we will talk about that a little bit today. Also want to direct you to um, PRX has a, a Medium blog. 
Um, and there we have published, um, next slide, yeah. We have specifically published a blog post on how to make your Google Podcast Creator Program application stand out. So definitely check that out um, if you haven't already. Um, but in short, what makes a great application is you have really shown us why you are the one to make this podcast, who the show is for. So specifically um, that you know your audience, right? Um, a podcast for everyone is a podcast for no one. Um, so specifically, who is listening to your podcast? Um, what other things are they interested in? Where do they live? How old are they? Really get detailed. Um, also, think stories and tell us stories in your applications as opposed to just topics. Instead of telling us, oh, my podcast is about art, um, give us a story, give us an arc. What, what is the podcast doing? And finally, show us you're ready to make the most of the opportunity. So take your time in the application um, and tell us what you want to get out of this training. All right, before we jump into answering the questions, we do have just a very, very quick poll for you. I'm launching it right now. And we're really asking if you give us permission to send you um, emails going forward. So just take a quick minute and then we'll jump into the Q&A. There's also an option there to also opt into emails for the PRX's podcast garage. It's an amazing part of the training team um, doing lots of online events and education. So another good sign up for you. Looks like a lot of 49. you have done this. Cool. 51 out of 58 people, 52 out of 58 people. Here we go. Do the remaining six want to also vote? Okay, go, go. A couple of seconds. A couple of seconds. Thanks, everyone. All right, now we will move on to which game for the questions and answers. All right, cool. So, uh, so I'm going to uh, ask the questions, and then uh, Tony uh, will help us uh, find the answers. And then, um, so we're going to do a few of the, uh, a few questions that we've gotten um, from, uh, from, from a lot of people over email. And um, after listening to this question, if you have further questions, please feel free to put it into the Q&A chat room. Uh, and we'll, all, we'll, we'll make sure to cover other questions that haven't been answered as this part of pre-selected questions. All right, so first question, what is the deadline? Thanks, Eric. That is a fairly easy one. Um, the deadline is um, Sunday, August 2nd, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. And we have, by the way, thank you for asking, are making this clear on multiple pages of our website. So. <laughs> thank you, Tony. All right. Next question. Can I apply if I have not launched my podcast yet, but will soon? All right, the answer to this one is a little tougher. So this year's program is specifically designed for podcasters to work on an existing show. So you need to have published multiple episodes in order to take part. Um, we had a similar question um, where someone asked, hey, I thought this program was about providing startup capital to podcasters, so what's the deal? Um, <laughs> well, that's not exactly, um, what the program is for, right? The program is to um, support uh, underrepresented voices in podcasting globally. Um, last year, we created a lot of great resources at this sort of introductory podcasting 101 level. We're gonna talk a little bit more about those later too. Um, and so we're really kind of looking to expand and you know reach another group of people. So you do need to have an existing podcast um, with multiple episodes published. Thank you. All right, next question. Uh, can I apply if I have published two or three episodes, but not five? Again, yeah, it gets hard. So um, we would say, yeah, you know, um, we recognize five is like an arbitrary number and we want everyone <laughs> to apply. Um, we're so excited to get these applications. We're like kids in a candy store as the new ones come in. Um, but I think just think about it 
in terms of like, how can you really shine? If you have produced maybe less audio uh, than some of the other people that you might be sort of competing with, um, how do you make yourself stand out? So be really clear again, um, why you, why this podcast, um, based on all the work and experiences that you already have that you bring to your podcast, share that um, with us. All right, thank you, Tony. Uh, next up we have, I am part of a team where I host uh, and my teammate produces. Can I apply? Yes. Um, we actually find that teams tend to have sort of better experiences in training than solo producers. Um, regardless of your setup, you know, podcasting can be, can be tough, but it's a lot of, of work. Um, so teams often, um, you know, I have a better experience. Um, what I would note here though, so you can apply solo if you are solo, um, explain to us sort of like how you approach your work, how you get it done. Um, if you're a team, that's great. Um, but note that whatever size team you have, you can only send two members into the training. We try to keep the groups pretty small, so it's really interactive. Everybody gets to know each other. Um, so just be thinking um, which two, if you have a team that's larger than two. All right. Next, uh, is the program only for uh, 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 BIPOC uh, creators? No, uh, the program is really open to um, anyone to apply. That said, the program is specifically devoted to supporting underrepresented voices. So we strongly encourage BIPOC creators to apply. And we really consider a wide variety um, of forms of diversity and representation including in the topics of, of what the shows are about, um, though diversity of creators is, is also really important. Um, but there's no specific rules around, um, around that in terms of who can apply. All right. Can I apply for all three cohorts? Yes. Um, so we are running three, basically, groups um of trainings this year so the first one is starting in the spring we have another one that kicks off in the winter and finally one next spring and summer um, in the application it asks you can you not attend any of these um, so we want to encourage you to be basically as flexible as possible um, because that's of course going to increase um, your chances but so you can see um, on the screen now what the question looks like um, and what those um, timeframes are. So those are gonna be, we're basically in taking a bunch of applications now, we're gonna review them all and we're gonna be as thoughtful as we can about how we um, group these different podcasters together based on availability and other factors. Cool. All right. Uh, is the PRX, oh, sorry. Is a PRX program averse to me creating revenue outside of direct advertising? No, I'm actually not totally sure what this question was referencing specifically, but um, diversifying revenue is, is great. So if you have a more specific question, you can, you can email it in, but. What level of English do I need? You're gonna want you know, a sort of advanced conversational level of English to participate in the training. If you're following the webinar so far, you're probably good. Um, conversations can get, you know, pretty conceptual. Um, so it's really, I think, about your comfort level. Um, but, you know, a strong conversational English at this point is, is needed for the training because it will be in English. Right. Uh, is our budget for item is our budget for items we have already purchased or things we plan to purchase in the future to make this show better? Yeah, so in the application you're asked to submit a budget. What you want to do is make a realistic budget for what it takes to produce your podcast. So it's probably going to be a little bit of um, things you've already purchased and um, some things maybe 
that you wish you could purchase. Um, so for example, um, maybe you wish you had a better recorder and you think it's like really critical um, to the success of your show, you wanna include it. But you also wanna think about like, am I creating a budget that's actually sustainable? <laughs> um, it's one thing to say like, oh yeah, I'm gonna spend tons of money on marketing and studio time. It's also, well, can you afford that? So think about you know, what your goals are, what's sustainable for you, what do you already have or already spend, and what do you, where do you think that you need to, to get to with your budget? There are line items being asked for in the budget that I already have. Do I still include them? If so, how do I include them properly? Again, I might suggest this person send us an email, uh, which is in the application. It's on our website, and it'll be at the end of our deck today, googlecp.prx.org. Um, but, you know, good budgeting principle, line item is listed once. Um, sounds like you uh, maybe are overthinking a little bit, just cover your bases, but I'm gonna also give a couple more budgeting tips. Um, now, um, when you look at the budgeting question in the application, um, just on the next slide, um, you'll see on one side, there's sort of additional text asking you um, more specifically what to do and giving you some further instructions. Um, most all the questions, actually all the questions in the application have some additional detail um, you want to make sure that um, you read that detail. It's going to help you really write a better answer, but there's also links in there to additional resources that can help you. So in the case of budgeting, we've linked out to our podcasting 101 videos. If you haven't checked these out, I highly recommend it. Also, hot tip for the webinar folks, we reference these in multiple questions. Um, so definitely take advantage, um, definitely take advantage of this resource. For budgeting in particular, um, there's a video on making money. And it comes with a whole sort of suite of additional resources on budgeting, but it would probably only take you 10 minutes to get through the whole thing, right? So along with this super short video, it walks you through a budget for a podcast and that's available in multiple languages, but also this template that's on the screen right now. Um, and this is a template that you can absolutely use for your application. It's pretty straightforward. And you may say like, well, I don't need an associate producer. That's fine. You don't have to fill that line in. Um, but this is a, a pretty solid basic budget that would be great for your application. So definitely check out Podcasting 101 videos on the Google Podcast Creator website. Watch the video and check out the sample. If you still have questions or get stuck, again, uh, just shoot us an email. All right. So Tony, does the audio sample need to just be from one episode or can it be a montage of highlights from different episodes within two minutes? Yeah, uh, it could definitely be a montage of highlights or um, if you have a trailer or you want to make a trailer. Um, again, regardless of what the sample is, uh, make sure to read those instructions um, and provide a thorough um, explanation of what the audio sample is. Um, I'll tell you, we have a bunch of applications so far where folks have submitted full episodes without a ton of context, um, which is just tough because we know we're not going to be able to listen to the whole thing and we don't really know what is the applicant trying to communicate to me about this specific audio right so you want to think about it in that way um, what do i want the people reviewing the applications to understand about my work explain it where there's space to explain it and attach a short clip Is this a full-time commitment or can be done alongside other employment? This is a super common question as well. Um, I would say it's not a full-time commitment in the sense that it's not like you can't have a job or other things in your life, but I would say it is a significant commitment. 
Um, and probably if you have a lot of other commitments, you know, outside of work, um, that it might not be for you. And also I would encourage you think about it this way. Think about how much time you spend working on your podcast currently. Remember that we're going to ask you to pause production to really focus on taking advantage of this training opportunity. So transfer all the time you would normally spend on your podcast into training and then probably add a little bit, right? Because um, you're going to want to take advantage of webinars, um, all the new people um, that you're going to be meeting. So it will be a big commitment, um, but we're going to be obviously as flexible as we can be in terms of scout scheduling the sort of synchronous online things where we want everyone to be online together. Um, but it's, it's definitely a significant commitment. I don't live near you uh, and can't travel right now. Will I be able to train online? Yes, absolutely. So all of the training work we're doing as part of this program will be 100% um, online due to, um, you know, concern around traveling and gathering because of COVID-19. There will be um, no in-person training or showcases. We're going to do everything just like this. <laughs> awesome. So now uh, we're going to, so those were the, uh, Q, uh, the questions that we've received a lot of. Uh, and now we're going to uh, answer some questions uh, uh, in the Q&A. Uh, Steph has been helping with uh, answering some of them um, uh, over, over the, uh, the Q&A chat box. And um, so I'm going to go over some of the other ones that have not been answered so that we can address them live. Um, so, so we have one here that's asking, let me just change this. Uh, okay. So, yeah, first, make sure you have this email address and make sure if you haven't spent much time on our website, check out those FAQs, look into our advisory committee, the podcasting 101 videos. There's a ton there, um, but also Google CP at PRX.org. Um, if your question doesn't get answered today or you run into a snag with your application later down the line, um, that email address is the quickest way to get in touch with us. Cool. So uh, the first question is, uh, are you heavily skewed uh, to audio producers, journalism, and niche market, or is this open to others who do not have this background? Uh, if we turn in our applications and based on this new info, we'd like to update it, is it possible or not? Um, yeah, I, we, we are really open to anyone with a podcast. So you don't have to come from a journalism background. Um, if you've turned in your application and you want to update it, I'm pretty sure that's possible. Um, I think if you log into Submittable, um, you will see that option. Um, but I'm also just taking down your info, um, if that's okay, and uh, can follow up with you. Because I know I can edit people's applications, so I think you can too. All right, um, and then let me see if there's a next one. Okay, so how soon after the deadline uh, will people be contacted uh, regarding the decision? We have set an ambitious goal for ourselves. We're going to um, get back to everyone by September 4th, so about a month. Cool. And uh, next question is, uh, during the 12-week production halt, is it okay to post episodes that have already been recorded or are you looking for the, sorry, let me just answer this slide. Or are you looking for the podcast to take a firm break during this time? Yeah, I think that um, we can be flexible about that. Um, I think the idea is just more to have you focus on the training. Um, if you have you know, some, some episodes you want to publish, particularly if you're in a situation where you've already sold ads or who knows, um, that's probably fine. That's something that we could, we could talk about later. Yeah. Nice. All right. Um, this question says, um, Ooh, Eric, yeah. breaking news from Stephanie on submittable, um, related to the earlier question mm -hmm. about 
can I edit my application? So you can withdraw um, and re-enter. Unfortunately, that's how it works. So you can't change it. So I would probably like copy and paste my <laughs> responses before withdrawing. I'm sure you would just. Yeah, and, and well. as always, you can always reach us uh, by the googlecp at prx.org email if you find that process to be difficult and we can help you out with that. Cool. So uh, next one. Um, oh, this is interesting. So if our podcast episode uh, will be published by the end of July, would our podcast still be eligible for the program? Yeah, so the application deadline is August 2nd. <laughs> so I would say if your feed is active um, with more than a trailer, like you've produced an episode, your application is amazing and stellar, um, then yeah, you're good. Um, you know, I have had the question of like, I'll be live by September when the training starts. And it's just like, I want to say yes. Um, but <laughs> the reality is once we get past reviewing the, um, the audio sample that's in the application, it's definitely possible that we're going to go to your feed and listen to more episodes. And that's going to actually help us narrow down our decision. Also, you know, when we have told other people that they need to be published, you know, they need to have started publishing, like at that point, we just can't make an exception. But if the application comes in um, and your feed is, is alive and you have episodes in there, that's good. And we're not gonna, we're not gonna check in advance. So August 2nd would be the deadline. I also saw someone ask a question. Um, I don't have five episodes, I have 40. Can I still apply? Yes. <laughs> That's really just a minimum, is that you need to be actively sort of producing episodes. Cool. All right. Uh, for the cohort, uh, will there be specific time for it, like 5 p.m. EST, or would that be revealed uh, when selected? That's a great question. We actually have not totally figured that out yet. Um, but part of the reason one of many reasons that we are taking applications in a large group and then are going to try to break them into cohorts is to see um, where we can find um, sort of commonalities between diverse people. So maybe time zones, <laughs> for example, which can help people get together. I think there would be a specific time um, probably for each group that we would meet regularly. And I imagine that we will work with the selected teams to determine what that time is rather than saying this is the time, right? So we put the cohorts together in a way that we think is going to work the best on a variety of fronts and then probably survey all of you about, you know, once you've been placed in a cohort, what your availability is like to, to try to make it work. So we'll be flexible on our end and we'll also obviously ask for flexibility on, um, you know, the part of the participants as much as possible. Cool. Um, so I have another question uh, about uh, sub uh, submission where uh, an Excel sheet has to be updated. And uh, I know that, you know, we can always be reached at googlecpfprx.org if there's uh, uh, any issues related to that. Is there anything else you want to add, Tony? What's the question? Oh, sorry, the question, let me just, uh, it's, uh, it's, so there's several questions about like, you know, if they need to update an Excel sheet or some aspects of the application, uh, you know, uh, would that be possible? Yeah, so I think it's, um, so when you are in submittable, once you start an application, it gets saved as a draft. And when you log back in, you can change anything you want. It's only after you've already submitted it that you can't change. So if you've submitted it and now you want to make a change, that's where unfortunately you do need to withdraw the application and start it over. If you do, if you are in the situation of withdrawing and starting over, again, just make sure that you copy and paste, copy your <laughs> content from your fields and, and paste them over. It shouldn't take you um, too long to redo it. Does that answer the question? If you're having technical difficulties in submittable, yes, you can email us, but there's actually help in submittable, which is, um, you know, like a third party software. They're awesome and they're great. Um, and, you know, so anything kind of, if you think something is technically wrong with your application form, 
they can probably help too, but if you email us, we'll, we'll get you in, headed in the right direction. Cool. Next up, is there a minimum age to be a part of this program? It's a great question. I actually asked this question internally because it came in through email and I think it's 18, um, but I actually don't know if we have one. Does anybody know? <laughs> Uh, Steph, uh, uh, is, or, uh, I, I think that is correct, but uh, um, we, we can always uh, um, check on that. Um, and uh, so I think J so J Jaina was the one who asked the question. Feel free to follow up on that. Uh, but I, um, I think 18 is correct. They already wrote, on, wrote in. We're thinking it depends on your availability and if you have parental support um, and consent. Um, pretty sure that you emailed this in and I was just trying to get an answer um, internally, but I'm just going to double check and make sure that I have your contact info so I can get back to you. Cool. Uh, so another question here is, uh, how many hours per week on average do we put aside for the program? Um, it's because uh, the, the time that people work on podcasts varies, so it'd be great to get a stronger sense. Yeah, I think that, you know, initially the first week is probably going to be um, pretty, pretty intensive. Um, it's really hard to estimate times because it takes people very different amounts of time to do different tasks. Um, but I would say probably like a minimum of, you know, 10 hours given there's going to be time in workshops. Um, we're going to ask you to also give feedback to other folks in your cohort. Um, you're going to check in with me, maybe also with Eric, um, and you will have a mentor assigned to your team. You don't have to check in with them constantly, um, but there will be sort of ebb and flow, right, between participating in workshops, getting feedback, revising your own work, meeting with folks at PRX, and meeting with your advisor. That's, that, that sounds correct. And I would like to add that I think uh, in our experience, it just, and these weeks tend to be uh, a time when there's an intensive focus on this project. And so uh, it becomes hard if you have other set commitments or other, um, other big projects that you need to finish in that time. So um, while it, you know, it varies in, in terms of how you work, uh, I would say that uh, you would want to expect this to be something that you invest in the majority of your time, um, especially your, your work hours. Um, yeah, cute. Uh, let me see if there's another one. Um, cool, let me see, I just want to see if there's cover stuff that haven't been covered yet. Uh, ah. So this is an interesting one. Uh, what do you consider as the difference between a radio show and a podcast? If I have uh, a radio show, can that be submitted for this podcast creator program, especially if my project is already designed to be a multimedia across a variety of platform and distribution outlets? Yeah, so um, most generally is like a podcast is audio that's distributed through an RSS feed. Um, uh, and the radio program generally is you know, on the airwaves. Um, so if you have a radio program and you publish those audio files um, through an RSS feed to a podcast player or platform um, or anywhere that it's openly available, then it becomes a podcast. Um, so, so yeah, um, there shouldn't be any conflict there. Um, part of the application, um, we prefer um, to receive the link to your podcast through Google Podcasts. And we link in the application to instructions for how to get your podcast onto the Google Podcasts app. So if you have an audio program, but you're not publishing it as a podcast, I would start there. Um, but again, we have, um, resources through the podcast garage um, and other places that we can give people tips on how to take their audio and, and publish it. Cool. Uh, so 
So here's the question. Uh, uh, we have been sitting on a number of short episodes uh, uh, intended to be in interstitial. I assume that publishing these would not be as useful, uh, uh, would be not as useful starting our podcast from the longer first episode as intended. So publishing these short ones instead of a long first, one, uh, first episode. I mean, that is so specific um, without knowing anything about your podcast. I really have no idea. I mean, you know, there's, people do a lot of different things when they're launching a new podcast, including doing what people might call like little content drips, right? So there might be a trailer and some excerpts and teasers or, you know, um, so it could be part of a strategy, um, sometimes to launch that way if you're marketing your podcast. Um, it, it sounds like maybe that's not the intention here. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to, talk more about it, you can email us and we'll get back to you if we can, but this sounds like, um, like more, uh, like more specific than we can probably resolve right now. Yeah, and, and in general, I think uh, we appreciate it when people are able to uh, kind of showcase their type of content in whatever way. So uh, whether it be short or long or in whatever format, um, I think as long as it can give us a good sense of uh, what you're working towards, what kind of audio you're making uh, and what you can add to, to these uh, cohorts. I think that that's, that's most important. That's a great point, Eric. Yeah, when it comes to the actual application, making sure that what you are sharing and what you're publishing is representative of the work that you intend to do. All right, so the next question. So for the two minute audio sample, would you prefer to have a two minute cut or submitting a full episode okay uh, where you stop at the two minute mark? So what's, what's the content of the two minutes? Yeah, it's preferable just to um, do a two-minute cut. So again, or that is a two-minute cut of a full episode. A montage. Yeah, um, it's preferable not to upload the full episode. Cool. So, so it sounds like it's it's okay. Uh, anything within two minutes. Necessarily hold it against you, but we have been pretty strict about like following that instruction. So definitely, you select the two minutes and you upload just a two minute clip. Cool, and, and just to make sure we cover all aspects of this question, it seems like uh, it could be two minutes and it could be uh, different parts of your audio stitched together as long as it's two minutes, two minutes long, or if you feel like there's a segment from your full episode that you wanna share that's two minutes, that's okay as, as well. Again, it's more about what you think would, would be the best way of showcasing your material to us. So, so either one is fine, as long as it is two minutes long. Yeah. All right. Um, can I be part of a local media organization and still apply? Yeah, you can. Awesome. All right, so next one. Sorry, I'm losing my spot here. Let me see, I'm in the, okay. Could you just have more? Um, okay, um, this question, I'm, I'm not sure about, but I'll pass it to you, Tony. Uh, could you talk more about the content of the program? What is the process? What could I expect content and learning wise? What, uh, where can I potentially be with my, where could I be, be potentially with my podcast when the program has ended? Yeah, I mean, we're hoping by bringing in people with an existing podcast, um, some of the things that we are really planning for people to gain from this training is like, if you're not immediately ready to relaunch, like you've been working hard in this training, so you might need a little time, but we're going to have a set date <laughs> um, for people to relaunch their, um, relaunch their podcasts. Um, and part of that process is going to be um, you will have a clear, revised, beautiful production schedule that you're super confident that you're gonna be able to stick to that works for your team. You're gonna have a budget and a plan for how your show is gonna be sustainable for at least the next year. Um, you will have a, a marketing plan for your show. Um, and, um, one of the things, Eric and Stephanie can probably talk more about this than I can at this point, but um, we use um, 
design thinking in our training. So you're also just going to learn um, a ton about how to organize your creative and decision making process um, and how to um, work with your team. And one of the first things that you're going to do is learn some basic design thinking tools to really understand who is your audience. And we're going to have you get more specific than probably you ever thought <laughs> possible. Um, but that's going to become a great guide for you um, throughout the program to help you decide to make decisions if this is, you know, working for your audience and working for your plan. Uh, and for those uh, who are not as familiar with design thinking, uh, design thinking is like a, is a problem solving framework uh, uh, that we use throughout this, uh, this, the, this, this program. Uh, and the idea is to figure out, how, you know, uh, using this method to reach your audience and, and design your podcast according to the audience you're trying to reach. Um, so, so it's a very fun process and uh, it, it, through that uh, you learn a broader design thinking framework that, that we specifically apply to podcasting. Yeah, exactly. It's sometimes called human-centered design. So putting humans at the center um, of the process. Um, and I think it, it sounds like for most people who have gone through the program, this is one of the things that they love most about it, right? It's the becoming part of a new community of podcasters, um, really being given the time and space to think deeply about their work get a lot of feedback, give a lot of feedback, but also take all these design thinking tools and strategies with them into the future of their work and into their life. So that's a big part of the program too. Cool, so the next one, um, are you going to publish the results of the three co cohorts on September, in September of 2020? Yeah, so shortly after, um, everyone who has applied has been notified. And I should also say like, it's possible you'll hear from us between at some time in August. Sometimes we have follow-up questions for people and we'll get in touch. Um, but yeah, so by September 4th, we're gonna try to notify everyone in submittable. And then ultimately we have, usually have like a, a fairly big announcement, you know, um, on our website with photos and sometimes videos, people introducing themselves. Um, we're coming up with some other fun ideas of how we're going to introduce the new um, cohorts to the world. But yeah, that'll definitely be announced um, and published. Cool. Um, next one. Ah. I produced my first uh, season in uh, another language and would like to uh, uh, translate it to English and, and to plan the best strategy for the second season. Is that something? that I can do as part of this program. Yeah, I think so. I think we would definitely would want to understand why you want to translate it to English um, and um, what the factors are for um, planning out the second season. So we would definitely want to hear in the application um, specifically kind of what you want to do and why, what you feel like um, you would be looking for help and support with. So these are all great things to like really explain in the application. Cool. Uh, here's another question. I produce solo. Uh, is there anything in the course about how to build and pick a team? Yeah, that's definitely something um, that we can help people with. And we have done that in the past in this program <laughs> with people who came in solo. You. All right, so next up, um, let me see if we, ah, okay. If we made a special season that is different from the normal format, do we need to explain that decision in the application? Yes, please. <laughs> um, anything that you feel like, you know, we might look at if we start digging really deep into you and into your podcast, um, that we might have a question about, you want to try to, you want to try to answer that question for us. So if you've made some twists and turns in your podcast, we absolutely want to hear um, what that decision was like. Um, and specifically, again, since you know we're focused on people who have already started producing a podcast, like what have you learned and where do you want to go? Cool. Uh, 
Uh, one second, let me see. Uh, all right, so I, I'm reaching the end of this uh, Q&A. Uh, if, if I didn't answer your question, it could be that I lumped it with another one. If you think that parts of the answer has, uh, parts of a question hasn't been answered, please, uh, you know, uh, add to the Q&A and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll add to it. But, um, sorry, Tony, what were you gonna say? I'll send myself a question. It says, I don't think I understand the term branded content. Please explain mm -hmm. more about that. Um, so broadly speaking, when we talk about branded content and we talk about podcasts, so, Sometimes like a company or organization will pay a producer um, or a production team uh, to make a podcast um, sort of around their brand. Um, so lots of uh, companies have done this, um, Blue Apron, Tinder, Nike, right? So lots of brands um, have, um, paid producers or production companies to make podcasts for them. Um, doing that type of, those can be really great shows, by the way, um, but doing that type of work versus um, having full creative control is just a really different process. And so this training is, is built around the ladder, around having that full um, creative control of the work. So if your podcast is sponsored by a brand, um, that's not something that we can include. Cool. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I have this question that fell through the cracks. Sorry about that, Oreka. Uh, um, so this question is, uh, is about, uh, I think it's for Steph, so it's, uh, but I, uh, uh, what classifies as live storytelling and, uh, and what classifies as unstructured conversation? Yeah, so um, live storytelling, um, if you've ever heard of like the Moth podcast, um, is literally like someone is telling a story live and you're recording that performance and publishing it as opposed to something um, where maybe you're telling a story, but it's not necessarily live, maybe you recorded the same lines like 20 times, <laughs> right? And then you edit it and sort of put it, put it back together. Um, hopefully that distinction makes sense. If not, um, let us know. Um, unstructured conversation is a little bit um, harder exactly to define, but um, you probably know it when you hear it, um, when you sort of listen to a podcast and it's just like two people talking and they don't really have like segments. They don't tell you like what they're going to talk about, <laughs> for example. Um, that's, that's a pretty good sign that it's just an unstructured recording of people talking. Again, that's another kind of show that can be really great. Um, but the training isn't going to be, um, isn't going to be the best for that type of show. I don't know if that helps. That one's a little harder to Cool. Awesome. Uh, and again, always feel free to reiterate your question if uh, parts of it haven't been answered. Um, so another question is, uh, is the 12 week, so another question about the time frame. So is it eight hours a day or what's the timeline within that 12, 12 week period? What's the... So it is a 12 week time frame, eight hours a day, or what's the timeline? No, it's not going to be um, eight hours a day. And we don't have an exact schedule for you yet um, for a few reasons. And like part of that is, again, it's going to depend on who's in the individual cohorts because we want to we want to work with you and work with your needs. Um, and part of that is that it's a new program in a lot of ways this year. So we're still working out the curriculum, but it's definitely not eight hours a day. I know someone else had asked a question of um, if all of the training would be recorded or if all the training would be live. Um, and I think it'll be a mix of both. We definitely want um, there to be some live interaction of the full group every week. I imagine these are probably going to be sort of like design thinking workshops um, where you're, working on your own podcast, but you're also sharing things out with the group. And um, there may be some side pairings where you're giving maybe some feedback to another show. Uh, you might have a meeting with your mentor, but you may also have some things to watch and do on your own time. 
All right, so it'll be a combination, um, but I can't imagine asking you to be, you know, on Zoom <laughs> for eight hours a day. Um, that is that is not what the training will look like. We're definitely trying to adapt to uh, to this time of uh, you know doing things virtually, and we'll make sure to spread it out again based on people's needs. But but uh, you know you might end up spending you know eight hours or more working on your project, uh, but but not necessarily in, through one format and not necessarily all through Zoom. It could be on your own time with your team uh, and working on different parts of the project, but, but definitely it is a time intensive project that would take up a majority of your time during this uh, 12 week time period. Yes, but it is not a, you know, sign in at nine in the morning and we're gonna keep you to 5 p.m. class setting. You know, this is, um, yeah, this is, a little more varied, <laughs> not school exactly. More fun. Cool. Um, let me see. I, okay, sorry. I believe the grant is up to up to twelve thousand per team. How will you determine how much funding each team would receive? So the up to part. Yeah. No, that's a great question. Um, it'll definitely probably be like somewhere in that neighborhood um it's the the funding and the equipment is is more based on like need if you apply and you're like a millionaire <laughs> and if you really want the twelve thousand, like we'll probably give it to you um but we we want to make basically as level a playing field within the cohort as we can it's obviously impossible to do. The world does not work that way right now, as we all know. Um, but we just want a little bit of flexibility. So, you know, if someone is coming in and they have, you know, no equipment and they're down to their last dollar um, versus someone who, you know, has a stable job and a good set of equipment, um, we just want just a little bit of, of flexibility. Nice. Okay. One sec. Let me just... Uh... Uh, an update on the age question, um, and you do need to be 18. 18. So cool. For our 18 year old friend, try again next year. Also, um, check out our tracks network. You're not a, it's for people who are a little younger than you, um, but maybe if you have a podcast that young people might be interested in, that might be a good follow up. And come back next year. Um, cool. So let me see. There's another one. Um, okay. So this, this question has been brought up several times. So I just uh, make sure we can reiterate it, but, uh, can, can I have a day job while doing this? Yeah, that's like your call, you know, um, for all of us who are fortunate enough to be working right now, <laughs> we none of us want to give up our jobs, probably, especially, maybe, <laughs> um, to make podcasts. Um, so I think it's just being aware of, do you have sufficient time outside of work, right? What other commitments do you have? You know, will you be able to make a significant time commitment? Um, outside of your job, you know, no one is going to expect you to immediately respond to emails or, or slacks. Um, we know that people have lives. We want you to have lives. That's why um, you're interesting people who tell interesting stories. Um, so it's definitely, you know, like it's not a requirement um, that this is your all day every day. Um, but it's, it's serious and it's significant and we will ask a lot of you. So I would imagine um, whoever you are, whatever, you know, your life looks like, there's going to be some late nights in there <laughs> where, you know, you're feeling the pressure to turn something in or you have a creative review or a check-in that you're not ready for. Um, just remember that we're all in that boat with you <laughs> um, and, and, and you'll get through it. So. Um, it's good to have a job. It can make this harder, um, but it's totally expected that a lot of the participants will have other commitments. Thank you, Tony. So we're almost at time, and I just want to give a shout out to our colleague Steph, who has answered 63 questions uh, over, over typing. So thank you so much. Um, uh, so we have this one here about needs and time zones. 
uh, so this person, Beverly, is in Kenya, and you know it's past midnight here right now. Uh, thank you for joining us past midnight. Um, but so Tony, how how do we how do we um, you know uh, approach the time zone issues? Yeah, it's been a challenge um, during this program for sure. Um, again, it's one of the reasons that we're trying out you know this big round of applications bring all the applications in that way if we find um you know um folks in a time zone who is going to be challenged to put with this other team um that will have that flexibility and work it out so hopefully we won't be asking anyone including ourselves to <laughs> be on um zoom calls at midnight um but that's part of how we're gonna select the cohorts is that answering the question I can't actually, there's so many questions. I can't. Yeah, I think, I think so. And it's something that I, I was reminded of is that, uh, you know, we have three, again, we have three cohorts. And so we'll try to adapt to the needs. So I think uh, we'll, we'll try to make it work. So I feel like, um, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely, that, that shouldn't prevent you from applying, uh, you know, and, and we'll, we'll definitely um, see if it's possible to, to, to make it work for everyone. Yeah, as as thanks for those of you who stayed up. But that's also why we scheduled three of these at different times of day. Um, okay. Cool. Yeah, I think we're at time. Wrap up. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, um, thank you everyone for uh, asking questions. And uh, if you have any other questions, uh, you can see uh, we have our email: googlecp@prx.org, uh, and feel free to visit our website: googlecp.prx.org. Um, if you have any other questions. Yes, thank right. you. And we look forward to your applications so much. Thank you so much. Have a, uh, have a good day wherever you are. Have a good night, good day, good morning. Bye.